Hello and welcome back to another Giant Slayer TFT Top 10 video. Today's video will be a countdown of the top champions for ranked play in patch 1016. These are champions you're likely to see in most games, whether as a frontline, carry, or support. Keep in mind that the meta is always changing, so the viability and strength of these champions may vary day to day, depending on how the meta shifts. With all that said, let's dive on in. But before we begin, please don't forget to click the links in our description. Give your support to everyone who helped make this video happen. We host many TFT tournaments with plenty of exciting content to come, so be sure to also follow our Giant Slayer TFT social media pages. All right, let's get back to the video. And first up, we have the champion coming in at number 10, Ziggs. Ziggs has been a consistently solid early game champion for quite a while now. In 1016, his value hasn't necessarily gone up, but with the rise of Rebels and Max, he's definitely going to be seen more often in games. He's a really great early game carry, especially when paired with other Rebels and a Rumble. Later on, he can be replaced by Gangplank if you're playing a mech composition. Otherwise, he's just a utility champion in Rebels. That said, you can give him items like Blue Buff, Luden's Echo, or even Gunblade if you want him to be relevant longer throughout the game. Once you hit that late game, you can either sell him to give those items to Aurelian Soul when you're playing Rebels, or keep them on him to help Jinx get resets. Keep in mind if you do sell him that you either need to have another Jinx on your bench to replace him, or find him again if you're going to want Demolitionist for Gangplank. All in all, he's a solid one-cost champion with a lot of impact in the early game. Moving along, we have Soraka coming in at number 9 on today's list. Soraka is returning to the top 10 list because her healing is still valuable. Mystic remains an important trait in the meta due to most compositions running at least some magic damage. Some games will have more and some less, but overall splashing in two Mystic is going to be your goal later on in the game. While there are several great Mystics, Soraka should almost always be one of them in your build. The amount of healing she does stalls out fights significantly, which is overall a good thing for any composition. Besides Mystic, the other build you're likely going to use Soraka in is Star Guardian Sorcerer. The trio of Janna, Nico, and Soraka isn't as prevalent in the meta, so you're generally only going to find those three in that build. But with how necessary Mystic is, you're going to want Soraka in most games. Next up, we have the number 8 champion for today, Lucian. Lucian continues his warpath as a great two-cost carry champion through the early and mid-game. Cybernetics are a bit inconsistent at times, but Lucian can help them have a really strong early game, which helps you transition into six cybernetics later. You can also use her as an item holder for Jinx until you two-star her later. Definitely look to play Lucian when you're able to quickly two-star him, as he will carry you into whatever composition you're planning to transition into. We have our first of two Space Pirates on today's list, which is Jace coming in as the number seven champion. Jace is still a pivotal champion for your front line at any stage in the game. While he doesn't have crowd control like Wukong, he brings a lot of AoE damage to get through the enemy front line quickly. Vanguards are still the best front line option currently, so having him is always worthwhile. There's a few other reasons to consider Jace. One is Space Pirates. While four Space Pirates isn't exactly reliable, it is playable if you high roll an early enough Gangplank. Jace will weaken or kill the front line for your other Space Pirates to pop off in fights. Early game, if you can find Jace, he's incredibly hard to kill, which makes it much more likely for your Space Pirates to get extra gold. Lastly, there was an item change to Gunblade, and that has made it amazing for Jace. The overheal effect gives him an almost permanent shield because his spell damage is so high. All right, let's move on and talk about the number six champion, Ash. Ash is still going strong in the meta, although she's fallen off a bit in priority. That said, she's still incredibly valuable as a backline utility champion since her ultimate is a three second stun at level two. Most often you'll see her play as a fourth sniper in Astro Sniper builds. Outside of that build, she's great as an early to mid game carry if you can two star her. The only composition that she truly shines in though is the carry in Chrono Ash, but that's not really a common meta build. As far as items go for Ash, Shojin is hands down the best, so try to get that for her if possible. Beyond that, you really won't give her items unless you're on the treasure trove and have extra components to use. In that case, you can deck her out with a Runin's Hurricane and Static Shiv. Those combined with Shojin's and her ultimate will increase both her damage and crowd control. Since we mentioned Astro Sniper, let's talk about the champion coming in at number 5, Teemo. Astro Sniper is still doing well enough in the meta to make Teemo a worthwhile pickup. Jin definitely does more overall damage, but Teemo has a few other things going for him. First, he does high magical damage to multiple units, which often hits the front line. If the other players don't spread against your Teemo, you're going to have a field day watching his mushrooms blow up their front line. 
Another reason for Teemo being strong is his CC. The slowing effect of his mushrooms is incredibly frustrating to play against as enemy champions will move so, so slowly. Lastly, his traits are great, specifically Astro. Astro itself isn't much to write home about, but it does help the units cast sooner in a fight, which means more CC since all of Teemo, Gnar, and Nautilus have crowd control. Overall, Teemo is an amazing champion for Astro Sniper. Moving along, we have Fizz coming in at number four. Fizz was nerfed in 1016, but despite that, he's still been a devastating force in the backline. Not only is he great against the backline, he's also a core champion in mech, which is currently a top composition in the meta. We should definitely point out that Fizz may be highly contested in games because he's just an all-around good champion to slot into any build, and there's going to be generally one or two mech players in any given game. So getting him two-starred may prove difficult. But once you're able to get him two-starred, he's an absolute beast, whether it's just a standard infiltrator or part of the mech. Next, we have one of the star carries of the patch, Jinx. She's sliding in in a solid number three on today's list. Jinx got buffs again in the last patch, and she, along with Gangplank, have become staples of the meta. She's played in both Six Rebels and Brawler Blaster, both of which have a bit of overlap with one another. Jinx will do well as the carry for either of those builds. While Jinx is susceptible to burst damage CC and infiltrators, if you can keep her protected from most of those, she's going to absolutely wreck fights. She does still need help getting her into her resets, but there's plenty of champions to assist her with that, especially in rebels between Ziggs, Aurelian Soul, Rumble, and Gangplank. She's also flexible in what items you can give her as she can use a variety of both damage and utility items. Defensive items are also not a necessity due to the shielding of rebels as well as having good positioning. Moving along, the champion coming in at number two on our list is Rumble. Rumble is, quite frankly, a beast in the early and mid game. Later on, he does fall off, so either you replace him with a gangplank or just use him for the mech, but early game, he is amazing. Even without items, his spell does a lot of damage and it's really easy to find a Ziggs to pair with him so his ultimate can also stun, but he shines the absolute brightest when you give him items. Whether it's defensive items like Guardian Angel or more aggressive items like Jeweled Gauntlet, he's going to pop off in fights. And the champion coming in at number one on today's list is Gangplank. This shouldn't come as too much of a surprise as Gangplank does a lot of damage and is very popular right now in the meta. Even though he just got a hundred damage buff, it feels like there's a few more reason as to why he feels stronger than just that buff. One is a shift in the meta that has made mech and rebels much stronger builds. This inherently makes Gangplank stronger and therefore more viable. Second is the nerf to Shroud. Shroud was a huge counter to Gangplank and while it's still good against him, 30% increased mana means he's still likely to get at least one cast off before dying as opposed to the previous 40%. Beyond those, the fact that both Rumble and Ziggs are doing well makes Demolitionist and thus Gangplank more valuable. It also has made Mercenary a bit better, although the upgrades are still overpriced for the value they provide with the exception of Double Strike. The last thing to mention is that, yes, four Space Pirates did receive a buff, so that, along with Gangplank, has made it somewhat viable. It's still difficult to do as finding a Gangplank early enough isn't easy, and you're likely to transition out of that build late game. But since it's a build relevant to Gangplank, we felt it necessary to mention it. And that is going to be it for our top 10 champions. Before we end today's video, we still have just a few more champions to talk about in our honorable mentions. Starting off our honorable mentions, we have Master Yi. Master Yi is definitely a staple of the meta because of six Blade Masters. The build is referred to by many names, but we'll just call it Slash Bros. So why is Master Yi a common part of the meta, but not in the top 10 list? One word, consistency. It's quite difficult to properly run Master Yi as a carry because there's a lot of things that need to fall into place first. The first thing is the fact that he requires, at a minimum, three bows. Without Rapid Fire Cannon and Runins, he has a difficult time doing damage and staying safe. Another reason is that the win condition for Slash Bros is hitting Master Yi 3. Otherwise, the build falls apart as other late game compositions scale better. And the last reason is that the composition is often contested. This ties into the second reason, but basically when multiple players try to run a Master Yi, it makes it very difficult to find him, even just as a two-star champion. Most of the time, those players are gonna end up holding hands in the bottom four if they don't pivot. All of these reasons make it so we can't justify having Master Yi in the top 10, but don't let it dissuade you from playing Slash Bros. In the right circumstances, it is an absolute 
absolutely amazing build. Okay, moving on to the next honorable mention, we have Bard. Bard unfortunately got hit by the nerf bat in 1016. It wasn't a major nerf, but it targeted how quickly level one Bard generates mana, and that has certainly lowered his overall strength. Since Bard 1 was often what you'd run early on in stage two, that's where most of the value came from. Of course, he is still viable and will earn you extra experience, but at a slower rate than before, making him just a bit less valuable. Once you two-star him, he's the same as he was before, but the hit to him at level one is why he's no longer in our top 10. And our last honorable mention, we're going back to a similar idea from the last meta, which is highlighting legendary champions. It's still a large part of the meta once you hit level eight and nine, you're simply just going to look for five cost units to buy and play. Janna, Aurelian Soul, Thresh, Echo, and Lulu are all commonplace in that meta. Some of them, like Aurelian, will be used more often because they're good in other meta builds, but all of them are viable as a late game option. Thresh, as usual, is the best because he pulls in other units from the bench. This makes champions like Urgot even better as they'll get to cast their ability almost instantly. All in all, it's a very broad honorable mention to just say legendary champions, but given how the meta has developed over the last few patches, it's something that we have to acknowledge. All right, folks, that's all we have for you for today. Overall, this meta is quite balanced with a lot of options. Certain champions are a bit overtuned late game like Gangplank, but in general, you're going to find a wide variety of playable units throughout the game. Let us know in the comment section below how you feel about the list and what champions you think deserve to be on it. Thank you for watching, and if you're enjoying our content, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for future Giant Slayer TFT videos.